Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our Saving Your Disaster campaign. This is the bonus mission of the It's Already Lost campaign. This concludes hopefully our It's Already Lost campaign where we were forced to stretch out the Avatar project just a little bit to get everything back in order and we've done an admirable job I think overall. Um, essentially reduced the Avatar project to only half of the blips, got access to um, two additional uh, facilities, upgraded everything to the highest, or almost everything to the highest tech tree, uh, tree. and now we're uh, doing an above and beyond uh, type of mission with Operation Nightfall, where we're finally uh, going to fight against the Chosen. Uh, the assassin to be precise we got our typical team uh, with us warden scimitar crash slider deep six and hawkeye same equipment as before so let's jump right into the mission and see how well we're going to fare against her not all of the weapons are already upgraded but over time there is enough uh, resource available that the owner of the safe game can eventually upgrade all of the weapons that's just kind of playing it out now good we have landed by the way nice win for profit from this mission will also be that we are finally getting a rushy the ever so beloved uh, shotgun and the katana of the chosen both weapons are just phenomenal all right moving in we do have one concealed unit. I want to use the strength of uh, that unit. I'm going to move all the way over there. Interestingly enough, the door here started open. All right, moving in. Nothing to see. Oh, it's fantastic. We're just going to step up. Roger that. As you direct. And Hawkeye also takes position. Move, move, move. And interestingly enough, we're immediately starting with a dual pack or a larger pack that runs into us. I will try to remove most of these guys without using any of our cooldowns. In order to do that, let's maybe start with setting these guys up. Nice little shredding here. And a nice little shredding over there. And a nice little shredding over here. Fantastic. That worked like a charm. Overall, Seems doable. we can drop our concealment. Us here should get rid of the uh, codex. We're going to use our cooldowns, of course. There we go. That's one hit. That's oh, another one, and un unfortunately, we don't have face off yet uh, with her. I will wait with the last shot. And we're instead going to move over. There we go. That's a solid kill. And let's build up some focus for the Templar as well. Ah, too bad. Alright, even if that wouldn't have hit we would nonetheless have killed it thanks to bladestorm all right overwatch and we're good first peg down couple of cooldowns that uh, we have taken 
So the next logical step is reloading wherever necessary and going for a nice little overwatch. Good. We're going to do a couple of rounds with that and then eventually we'll continue and move in deeper. Wow, did she just say we're unworthy of existence? That's a pretty harsh statement to make for anyone. Right, that's a good line of vision into the next room without exposing ourselves. Two more rounds and then I think we're going to be fine. Overdrive will be back. And yeah, that's a common mistake as well, just rushing in, essentially not using the cooldowns well enough. Good. We got our cooldowns back. Start moving up. Opening the door, and there's the next pack. That'll be a fast one. The only way that your race is going to survive is to submit. Yet another statement. That is highly controversial. Alright, let's start shredding. And you know, whilst we're at it, let's just make sure that this guy has a bad time. Moving over. Start to mark him. Moving into solid cover. Thank you. Oh, that's a great setup. So much so that we can farm some focus. There we go. That's two for one. Fantastic. Should have potentially waited um, with the specialist so that we do have a mimic beacon left over. But we would have had enough counterplay still left over. Okay, rinse and repeat. I'm still looking for that final chamber. I think we can start moving in a bit further. That and that. And that, and we can position ourselves here. Good. And now it's the same shtick over, essentially, where we're uh, reloading, overwatching. Let's see if we get some sound indications. We do not. Which means that the enemies are simply at the moment not patrolling in here. Fine by me. Well, that's not a problem. Two more rounds and we got overdrive back, which is a handy ability just to kind of soften up the enemies. Oh, look at that. Someone was actually starting to move into our trap. Unfortunately, the shotgun is pretty poor at accuracy. Our Overwatch specialist, on the other hand, is not poor on accuracy. Quite the opposite. 
There we go. Fantastic. I have to focus. Good. Remember when I said overdrive is a fantastic ability? Now we can show that. Open up here. And we could easily win the encounter simply by using one of our shredding weapons, but it is advisable to use none of the cooldowns yet. Okay, we could hit either of these guys. Eight to nine, that'll be a kill. I like the odds of it. Also, we're positioning nicely next to the heavy mech. There we go. And she finally got her promotion. Very well deserved. Let's see. Us is still decent. Not perfect, but decent. What are we looking at? Two hit points. Okay, cool. Let's do this. Moving up, and it's clean up duty. Very low hit chances. I was sort of hoping we could uh, get the mech and could actually hit it. But unfortunately it's not happening. But there are quite a few options that we do have available for us. The stock automatically deals damage, so that means we. This here is a 100% kill. So that Bladestone can do its dirty deed. And complete shocker that Sustenance saves this priest. No one would have ever guessed that that is a thing. Reload Overwatch. Reload Overwatch. Reload Overwatch. Good, pretty straightforward. If you play safe, there's, I mean, you don't even need the consumables. There's plenty of options for you to, to deal with those guys. Well, how about that? Moving on target. I'm going. I've today I'm seen a forum post on Reddit where the question came up how to effectively win legendary iron man without any casualties so the quote unquote flawless run and it is easier than you might think and i don't want to belittle uh, the fact that i know people are trying really hard to to get that achievement the reason why i'm saying it's easier than you think is if you just uh, remember uh, this entire run where we even started with a game that was arguably pretty lopsided in favor of the enemies. We haven't really lost a, a unit uh, throughout uh, each of the missions. And I wasn't 
particularly trying uh, to play extra, 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 extra safe. But now, with the increased hit point pool and just the cooldowns that uh, that you're seeing, if you are using the cooldowns intelligently, oh, that was a misclick. Speaking about using them intelligently and immediately misclicking, if you're using the cooldowns intelligently. It is actually not that difficult to get a decent result. Most of the packs that you have seen, even if it's kind of increased pack size uh, with four of them at a time, really don't stand much of a chance against uh, the weapons of XCOM in the end game. Good. Oh, it's the last room potentially. I'm sure they're not going to, to come out. So it's relatively safe to engage here. Nonetheless, if they were to decide to come out, of course. That would be to their disadvantage. Let's move already. Good to go. So one more pack and then it's time for the assassin. If we can actually get that overwatch to work. All right, what a coincident. Everybody could move up. Good, a little trick. Already know that they are supposedly there. Let's just move here. And hello! What a surprise. This appears to be an alien transport device of some kind. Understood. Looks like we found our way out of here. Bladestorm, Bladestorm. Bladestorm. And that's lightning reflexes, potentially. Figured. But that only works once per round, buddy. You are eventually effed. go a couple more kills Templar by the way I think was already promoted so let's not give her too many kills Movement engaged. a spark on the other side it's not yet promoted Let's feed some more kills into it. I apologize for your untimely death. Fantastic. I can handle and there is nothing just like shotgun to the face. Well, maybe there is. Okay, sniper also needs some XP. The good part about this team is everybody is XP hungry. There we go. You want some more? Sniper is promoted as well. Let's keep that in mind. I'm all over it. Already got two promotions out of this. That's going to be an interesting mission. Already there. All right. So, first 
first things first, you always want to have the cooldowns reset before you're going in. Good, which is about now. You also want to be fully reloaded, that way there is no headache once we're in there. And then we're going to ascend. Well yes, done, there we go. Alright, see you on the other side, guys. Time to stomp the assassin. And guess who landed in the middle of the assassin's chamber? We're in the belly of the beast now, people. We're Proceed absolutely carefully. in the belly of the beast. And the beast is soon going to Some be belly up, for the chosen? meaning no six feet under. Back at us despite everything we throw at them. Want to save some of our cooldowns for the sarcophagus? Push ahead, XCOM, undaunted in your task, a fitting epitaph for your race. You Open up, remember. and that should con uh, trigger. Not a surprise. Okay, we got a bit of an overwatch going. That's fine. Shock file to connect. Well, Shocker, you're out of luck, buddy. And so is the mech. Why not? Let's just get rid of uh, the Mac. Yet? Replaceable, we're not going to use. Instead, let's overdrive. We need to wait a couple of rounds, anyways, for Run and Gun to be back. That's a critical hit. Yeah, there is some loot which we're potentially going to miss. Closing on target position now. No problem, boss. I'll go quickly. We're crossing this line here. We're going to trigger the assassin. And I don't want that to happen. Instead, what I want to happen is that everybody moves up. We unfortunately don't have high ground here. But our sniper will eventually deal with it nonetheless. It's killing time. All right, couple of rounds. Yep, the loot expired, I know, shocker. All right, good. I think this here is not triggering. All right, one last round. Okay, here we go. Let's tackle the Chosen. Uh, maybe not the most clever positioning. Is this already triggering? It's not, okay, fantastic. And since it is not, I would actually like to go in with those guys first. Now, here we go. I want to move in with someone who can take an action afterwards. In this case, via run and gun. Let's take a look. I think I have not faced her. Teleport after taking damage sucks. Immune to melee damage. Oh, okay, well, I should have known that in advance. Could have checked, but yeah. Uh, summons Priest. Lowers will of any soldiers inside and does not trigger Overwatch, but gets bewildered easily and hates Reapers. Okay, cool. Good. 
Well, at least she can't be run down by the Templar. She has just vanished, which forces us to use scanning protocol. Well, surprise, surprise, who's there? It's a chosen. Okay. Let's actually move up here. Hmm. I was uh, thinking about using uh, using the team ability, but I won't do that. Is Demolition going to remove all of the cover? I think it is, even indestructible one. That will not be enough to stop me. I stand corrected, it is not. Well, that's the way how you eventually learn by making those kinds of mistakes. Not the end of the world. We're running and gunning. Moving out of position. Now is a good time for overdrive. We don't have that in the sarcophagus fight um, afterwards, but that's still okay. This should get rid of her armor. Did she really uh, just be out of... Uh, okay. I'm on my way. That is embarrassing because she was marked as a target, but it was only due to, due to the scanning protocol. This is turning into a guide of how to not uh, face her. That turns out to be a guide of how to not trigger her. She's still in full cover. And unfortunately will take moderate damage from all of these activities here. Throwing axe. At least burning. An unusual weapon. Not nearly as primitive as it would appear. You will share in my pain. What the it jumped to a new position as soon as it took damage. Can't frostbite her, but we can certainly lightning hand her. Should have eventually just ignored removing the cover because, honestly speaking, I really didn't do anything. Good, we're eventually going to get her down. I forgot about the planes uh, walking. Okay, before we're taking a shot here, let's eventually try to hit her. Oh, Doesn't really work. Your could, prove could have killed her potentially three times over by now. It's still moving. How have you but we haven't shredded her. So we're going to take one hit, and uh, that is well deserved uh, for not really working well against her. I should have just done the run and gun at the beginning, uh, got her out of uh, cover, and then essentially started to knock her down. Okay, we're going to get her. That's not a problem. Let's make it into a guide of how to also recover from those situations, because I'm pretty sure those 
little blunders happen uh, to you from time to time as well. Good, let's get rid of her and her armor. Fantastic. She's going to teleport yet again. Priests are really not that dangerous. The assassin, on the other hand, is. And getting her completely shredded. Helps us to deal with her big time. She's melee immune, so we're not going to just go there in order to melee her. Let's deal with the priests. That guy is going to die next turn. Regaining the focus that we've lost. And a bit of parry. Can't really use the grapple, which would be fantastic. What I would want to do is get into reach of the sarcophagus, which is about here. Let's move already. Then we're dealing with that other priest. Fortunately, the chances of frostbite are low. Well, that worked like a charm. Fantastic. Good, we got one, two, I can handle that. All right, moving up. That's a nice little hit not and a kill. Implaceable. We do not have, well, we do have untouchable. Let's maybe move over here so that she potentially will go for that supposedly easy target. We got the red assessment as well. Will not help against her because she's immune to overboard shots. Do we have a stock in here? No, we don't. In which case I would rather reposition so that we can engage with the sarcophagus next turn. There's the blade storm and that should be sustenance. Shocker. Yet again, sustenance. Harbor wave. The mist has you. Well. For starters, that really didn't do much. Moving over here. And let's try to hit her. Negative damage. Well, the stock damage should still make her planes walk. Finally have a grapple spot. Oh, that is cute. Good, let's see if this here is going to hit her. 50-50. It will take more than superficial wounds to slow my advance. Um 
Okay. Good. She's effectively here. Yes. Alright. Amplify. And vault. Oh, I should kill her. Well, not entirely. Don't like it because I want to use the high damage on other targets, but it eventually is necessary. That was far from being optimally played. We're going to get some focus back and there is still one focus on the ground. The reason why that was not optimally played is we've just let her live way too long. We could have ended her right after the first round. Unfortunately, Overdrive is still on cooldown, but we can start to get down the sarcophagus. Eight protocol over here just to get that extra overwatch shot going and let's start to massacre the sarcophagus we still have a chance to destroy it in one go I've left open enough options. The only thing that could defeat us would be kind of a stasis cast. Oh, wow. Good, but that's not going to happen. Finally, the Templar also got her promotion. Good, Sarcophagus is the definitely the main target here. We do not have Salvo yet, so can't really compete with that. But we can move up. I want to use Chain Shot. There's a chance that this is missing. But it is low. Uh, second shot missed, but still 13 uh, points. We're going to use teamwork. And we're continuing to unload. Could deal with that priest. And potentially that's the right call. I don't think that I'll get the sarcophagus completely. Not sure, but potentially not. Let's get a bit closer. We do not have lightning hands ready. Yeah, it's going to be unfortunately close, but not quite there. With overdrive, it would have been enough. If the chain shot would have landed, it would have been just enough. We're green to go. Good damage overall. Seen 
Templar's uh, weapon would have not dealt enough to change that. Plus, we would have had an, a loose priest down here, which I, of course, didn't want. That one here is bad enough. There is the mind control that I was hoping we wouldn't get. Alright, so, this is not a 100% kill. That's too low of a chance. We will use Warden once we need uh, to. But for now, reload. I think it's run and gun time to get that proximity bonus. Going in for the kill. Seems doable. Wonderful. So much for mind control. Moving up, hopefully we're spotting her out, which we are not. No more scanning protocol. Moving over here. Still nothing. Still nothing. I'm on it. Just a moment. Overwatch will not really do anything, so it's a bit of a problem. Well, it will do something against the priest that's there, but not against the chosen. She's potentially hiding somewhere here. That's a hundred percent kill thanks to the stock. Are you kidding me? Now you see where the chosen are sent to deal with this situation. I promise you. She really has been here and we were standing here and haven't found her. Okay. Well that was a stupid idea by the way. Uh, we do have Bladestorm. Maybe it was a good idea because our Bladestorm is not very reliable. Well, she's putting up more of the fight than I would have thought, mainly because I played it really, really stupid. But hopefully that'll come to an end as well. All right, we're going to start with the heal. Heal him up. Heal him up. And we got a Mimic Beacon if need be. At this very moment, we first and foremost want to... Shred her. We want to shred her good. And since... Uh, what's our chance of hitting her? By standing over here. We should be able to flank her, aren't we? 90%? Yep, I'll do that instead of overdriving. There we go, that's 
the shredding shot I was looking for. That looks like the perfect... Oh wow, no, it does actually not look like the perfect position. Yeah, it's hard to get her over there, not with 11%. And unless we want to position ourselves right in the open, which of course we don't. She's immune to melee, so might as well just deal with those guys. And whilst we're at it... we get him down to one hit point? Okay, that's nasty. I can handle that. Might as well just kill both of uh, these clowns. Not too shabby. And do a bit of an overwatch. overwatch. Could have used Combat protocol to get her back there, but she was not potentially not even in squad side, and it would have messed up our positioning. When you fight someone with planeswalker, you want to stay close. The best thing that she could do is essentially deal a little bit of damage. She has now hidden uh, once again. And it's a matter of time until you figure out where she's at. Nice little dodge. Now is a good time. This here would be good. good copy. Moving on target. On protocol. There we go. Getting her out of those indestructible cover spots. And she seems to love standing in those absolute mad positions still not a good chance to hit her might as well, well vault her she's now officially bewildered so every following attack will deal more damage Not sure why exactly that dealt so little damage. All right, half cover. Wonderful, much better. I will prevail regardless. We could get her this turn if she teleports in the right direction. High speed advance. Wonderful. 
wonderful. One more hit, and we're good, she. And as if she would have wanted us to kill her. That's what I'm talking about. 21 hit, uh, 21 damage. Gonna need to reload soon. Yeah, she has the nasty combination. Melee immunity and the chosen by the default is pretty nasty. But planeswalker on top of it and then immunity to any form of overwatch makes your tactical uh, options really, really limited. And it certainly didn't help that I started the combat with kind of the worst openings that I had in a while. And forgot about uh, the Planeswalker on top of it. Well, at least it makes for a hilarious video, that's for sure. Free reload. And let's kill these sarcophagus. All right. By the way, you've seen with the pistol shot that she has done, uh, the actual pistol of uh, the Templar also is dealing the exact same amount of damage, so we would not have been capable of getting her down in one go, just in case you wondered. All right, that's going to be kind of a one-on-one -on -one fight. We can tank the Andromedon. In the meantime, let's move over here. 79%. Might as well make it 60 and see if we can get this guy down. Reload. There we go. And another one. Come on. Fantastic. Not bad. Right, concealment, because I can already see that she's going to spawn somewhere and then potentially just tries to move away, and the concealment will prevent this from happening. A protocol. Let's keep that over here. Just in case the Andromedon moves, we're having a bonus shot. And another Overwatch. All right. I'm under attack here. I had not thought this possible to fight another on equal footing. How Let's see. Does that spot her out? Oh, complete surprise, right? But we're also revealed. Well, it is what it is. Moving to here. Well, this is out of line of sight of the Andromedon, because... No, it's actually not. Ah, unfortunately, no shredding. Moving over. I'd like to make sure that she's going to take the shredding. We go one arm more left but that is okay I can can work with that
right, moving into the middle, I think once again, I gotta get her out of uh, those corners. Yeah, the Planeswalker by far is the absolute most annoying trait. Even more annoying than immunity to melee. Grappling. So this is potentially opening up. No, it's not. Well... In that case, run and gun, reload, and just ignore her. I said it'll hit, by the way. Good, at least we dealt with the Andromedon. And we got some decent cross map play and a blade storm kill. Good. Time for her to do her summoning once again. Of course. And finally, she dazes someone. Alright, Slider here is the only one who unfortunately shouldn't have been hit. She's indeed a bit in trouble. Problem is, she's hiding right here, and we can't get to her. Alright, so how are we going to play this? Moving to here, should give us line of sight, it does. Bolt into forcing her to take a different position. Seventy-three percent. That's the final shredding that was needed. Oh, look at that! Fantastic. Well, unfortunately, not great odds to hit her. Luckily, she's getting marked either way, and the missed shot also allowed her uh, to teleport. There we go. Now she's finally getting the bewildered uh, debuff, and she's burning, so it might already be enough to kill her. And once again... She thinks that she's safe, but she is not. And that's the end of this well. endeavor. Boy, oh boy, what a fight. An hour worth of content, and I thought it would be a curb stomp. It potentially was the right decision to help him uh, with that encounter. Not sure if he would have gotten her. With better equipment, uh, certainly you could have gotten her, and yeah, to be entirely fair I messed up the beginning quite badly but you can always stabilize if you're playing solid afterwards and the rest was really just executing it good and the one thing that I think this year is a great uh, tutorial for is cooldown utilization had I just uh, saved the overdrive like I intended to do it 
uh, she would have gone down regardless. We've we would have just taken some damage and eventually killed the sarcophagus in one go. But by being greedy and wanting kind of to do it all in, in one round and then forgetting about uh, the planeswalker, that was just unnecessary. All right, we're going to take Arc Wave here. And I am considering going for Quick Draw as well because that would allow for two shots. In situations like the ones that you've seen, it's not a bad choice. Uh, you can always get the kernel abilities a bit later. The spark finally gets to repair itself. No question what we're going to take. And we got a kernel. I am going for Capacitator Discharge because it is a fantastic ability. And we're promoting here into Salvo. Action economy is always better than anything else you could do. And finally, Hawkeye into face off, which was dearly, dearly missing. So, a couple of breakpoints just to make that A team so much better. We got the Assassin's Katana and the Rashi. So, a Rashi being a super upgraded shotgun. And besides a couple of negative traits, I think this is pretty much saved at this point. If you look at the soldiers, we got four colonels, one, two, three, four, five, six majors, and then two captains plus the Viking. That means 13 soldiers to go through. Uh, it's an A team and a B team and even additional ones. Got a couple of lieutenants and sergeants here. All of uh, the nice gear is available, just needs to be researched. Uh, next steps for the safe game would be to continue the research in the shadow chamber to get options of dealing with the um, with the golden path missions in the resistance ring the next uh, topic besides reducing the avatar progress would be to then get the facility lead which i highly recommended and i mean it's all available right so there is there's nothing that's left to be done. One of the chosen is dead. Uh, there is a defense matrix together mounted, upgraded and mounted uh, with a an engineer. We are already on the way to get uh, the warlock uh, figured out who would be the next target. So after all of the necessary resistance ring missions, you can also go into the warlock and um, essentially kill this guy next for some uh, m more equipment but the major equipment the major equipment upgrade with rashi and the katana has has been happening in terms of uh, in terms of soldiers the one thing that i will say is a second specialist would definitely make sense so would i be playing forward i would now take jester and essentially level him or her um we already got revival and medical protocol so it's not too bad you can work with that and could eventually start uh, doing it um, by seeing just how many people are affected let's just remove a couple of negative traits and yeah really that is uh, that is that i think disaster avoided if you have a disaster campaign for me Feel free to reach out to me via Reddit. If you enjoy those disaster campaigns, leave a comment and a like down below. That helps promoting them. And uh, let me know what you thought about uh, the disaster campaign overall. Did you like it? Um, what went well? What did not so much? And see you hopefully in the next Saving Your Disaster Campaign run. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.